procedure. Can we fix it? I couldn't get a great view of it, so I just put it on its side for a second. Perfect, now I can fix it. Thanks, kid. Yeah. The shaft is just busted right here. Just like that. Exactly the same as in a car. Let's go rebuild it. What do you think of this? You think that's bad? So my plan was to show you guys how to rebuild this. Um, I went to the internet, found somebody selling just the shaft that's broken. But as you can see, it is way too long. So I'm not going to be able to show you that. I thought I could save myself 50, 60 bucks. But apparently, you know, you can't really buy parts for these. I'm going to go through it, show you guys still how it works, and maybe even just weld the shaft to the little cage in there. I'll show you. And maybe it'll be a temporary fix until I can order a new one. So this is out of my 2004 Yamaha Rhino. And this is out of like a compact car. You can see how identical they are. You got two different types of joints. This is not really a CV joint. Maybe it is. I mean, the whole thing's a CV axle, but the outer one is your CV joint more or less. This one is kind of your travel side. So this side allows movement in and out with the suspension. And this side out here is where it steers and allows you to get, you know, 45, 50 degrees of angle and still move fluidly. You're gonna try to save these band clamps, set up to the right tension, and just snap that off. And, oh yeah, we're shattered. I see the piece just hanging out right there. Can we weld it? Maybe. Will it be as, just as strong? No. Will it be 50% as strong? Probably. 70? Maybe. I think we're going to weld it. Why the heck not? This side, generally, um, there's just a uh, like a circlip on the back side of the shaft that's broken off. And generally, I mean, it takes some a decent amount of force to whack it out. But... Maybe we can, I might be able to just roll this over enough to get the cage balls out. So get your cage and your balls. Let's try to roll it. See if we can start popping the balls out. Actually hitting right there. So I might have to roll it a different way. Roll it this way. There we go. Hey, ball one. This in here is this little, um, You'll see it. It's like a spider thing. It's called your race. This right thing right here is just like your cage. It's just like a bearing, all the same names essentially. There you go. Here we go. Okay, got some of the grease off. We should be able to pull this assembly out. If you line it up, there we go. With these two, these little grooves right here, with those grooves right there, so if, even if you have this turned a little bit, you can't. You gotta get those flats just right. Pops out. What I'm gonna do is put this on my vise over the edges and just try to whack this straight out. Okay, that doesn't wanna come out. I think it's wedged itself. When it broke, it's like wedged itself in there. Generally, yeah, you would just, you know, I thought this repair would just be swapping a new shaft. You just hammer that out and swap in a new one. But I'm not going to do that. I could still get this out, but I'm going to leave it because I'm just going to weld it as is because this part may be damaged as well. It's savable. But if I can't find a shaft and, you know, you got to love that you can't find parts for anything. You can only find assemblies. You know, we're uh, assembly swappers, not just part swappers. People would rebuild them if we could. So what I'm going to do is actually weld this to this. I know. I'm going to weld it to it. And it's going to get me by for until a, a new one comes. I'm going to weld it to this as well. Um, generally, this you can see these how these things are kind of oblong. You would actually twist this far enough on its side that those fit 
into each side and then this will just fall out. The only issue I'm gonna have is putting this back into here. I think I can get it in there. I should be able to, I hope so. If not, we'll clearance some things. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the balls all back in here. And if not, I will just grind a little bit of a clearance on each one of these. If you're ever wondering what goes bad, like on a car CV axle, why they click, this little valley right here, see right in there, what will happen is the ball rubs in one spot, just back and forth. See, see how that's kind of, we'll call it a straight line. It'll get a little dupe, like lip in it. And so it gets that little lip where it always runs. And when you turn sharp and it clicks, it's because it's falling out of that lip and the whole CV axle is actually slipping for seconds. Just click, 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 click. Um, so when they rebuild these things, generally this outer cup is replaced and like these components, the little balls, probably not the cage, but probably and this little spider in here. Everything else, like the inner, that never goes bad. So the inner, all the rest, and the shaft never usually breaks on a car. So when they rebuild them, they pull them off, put new boots on, but the shaft, the inside is the same, original. This is new, and just this little spider and new balls. I mean, something you could do in your garage all by yourself and for a quarter of the price if they would just sell you the parts oh and if you're asking if this is hardened steel yep nice and hard as far as i know 4340 quick google search says just weld it but to preheat it you'll lose your heat treat it'll never be as strong so i don't need it as strong i just need it strong i'm just going to use regular um mig wire with c25 gas on a mig welder and we're just going to Weld it up. So take the oxyacetylene, burn off some grease, and heat it up. There we go. Got it pretty dang straight. Uh, I tried to build up the shaft even more for more strength because the, uh, you know, if you add just a teeny bit of diameter to something, you can, you know, if, if I added probably an eighth of an inch diameter to this, it'd be twice as strong, you know, with the same steel. But um, this is going to, it'll hold. It's going to hold. Three little extra notches in there. Okay, we got, we'll do the notches that are easy to get to first. One, two, three. Can we get the sixth one in? Come on. Oh, it looks like six. We got them all in there. There we go. It's all greased up. I'll just slide the boot on. I degreased this entire, well, I did degrease it. We got a glob right there. I'm going to use, I could use number two or number three aviation gasket sealer um, form a gasket. This stuff is not RTV. Like, absolutely not RTV. RTV does not bond to rubber, like at all. So, when people put like RTV on a rubber gasket and try to get it to seal, it just pulls right away. But if we put this on here, that will bond. It never completely hardens. It just stays as like a really hard tar substance. That will just bond that and keep that water tight. Crimp it back over to the exact same tension it was. These little tabs are bent out of the way. Here it goes.
Let's take this part real fast and I'll just show you what this side looks like. Just for fun. I actually take that back. I thought this would be like an automotive one. This is exactly like the, the outside. The inside is exactly like the outside with the um, uh, little cage and balls and stuff like that. Unlike an automotive one, like this, you can see how much longer this inside one. There's actually just three bearings on a three yoke thing. Might as well just show you guys what this looks like instead of just talking about it. Boom. So you got three grooves. There's a lot of grease in here. This is brand new grease, so it's black when you get it. And it's just these three, um, just bearings on these little studs. These just rotate. Nothing else here rotates at all. There should be a snap ring. Yeah, there's a snap ring right there. So this, this little three, you know, it's kind of like a U joint, but it's just a three prong. We'll just slide right off of this spline shaft. And this cup is just those three grooves. And it just allows this to move in and out. What do you see dang excited for? Snow? Yeah. Let's see how this axle holds up. We got, oh, probably about five inches. I've tamped it down now, five inches. And it is just solid water. It is heavy. You can't even pick up a shovel full that's under, you know, 45, 50 pounds. So let's see how well it does because it's going to need to work. Didn't break. I've done been doing donuts. I've been doing everything for about two hours now. It's working awesome. Been breaking winch cables more than anything else. Dog's happy. It's gonna be a week and a half before the new axle comes. I did order a new axle and I'll take the other one out and I'll use that as a spare just in case I need to, like now. trees for the winter get it what a happy dog you I flipped I put it on its side you rolled my rhino yeah why'd you do that was it fun? Yeah. Okay.